Hello, my soccer universe. We have an English final, but more importantly, we have a little guest down there. Little one is sick or staying home, so she joins me for this video, or you know, she joins me today uh, back there. Well, 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 I've been saying it a whole lot over the past few Champions League vi videos, review videos, circular power, and again, circular power came through. Whoever has more circles in their crest wins, which is kind of interesting because I'm debating with myself who has more circles in the crest, uh, you know, um, uh, City or Chelsea who are playing, playing the final. I'm actually inclined to say City. So City, if it holds, says City will win. And if you don't know what I mean by circular power, in, in this case, it literally means go to the crest and see which crest in shape has more circles, is more circular. That one won in the knocker stage. And if two circles meet, just count the number of circles in the, in the respective crest. And that team always won. It is really that way. So I really think it's probably Manchester City. But you know, going back to the um, uh, games itself, you know, the whole conspiracy, uh, you know, <laughs> weird theories out there. Um, I have to say those were, the return legs were rather one-sided overall. Uh, I think one could make an argument that PSG had a short period where they threatened to score. But then it was all Man City who really, really, uh, they were just way better prepared than PSG. And how Chelsea, especially in the second half, took apart Real, Real Madrid, that scoreline was flattering to Madrid. Uh, no doubt about that. And similarly, um, yes, one could argue that Madrid probably could have scored uh, a goal but honestly, it was foregone conclusion and uh, we have a final. It's an all-English final that, as, as I said in the last video, I'm not too excited about uh, finals from one country, but I definitely can say that two best teams have reached the final. At least when I look at the um, semi-final ma matchups, it was clearly the two best teams. I even think that Chelsea would have undone PSG. Uh, Real Madrid, yes, were limping over the line more or less. I mean, uh, the, it's really, really the picture. Real Madrid at, at the moment is a team that has to be uh, held together with duct tape and it showed really, really big time. It also showed that, you know, if stars are missing and if you don't have a, a fit team, you have no chance in the Champions League semi-final. Um, I want to run through the games a teeny bit. City PSG, uh, the big news ahead of that game was, of course, Mbappé was out. And already with that, I thought yeah, the other chances are rather, rather minimal. And then add to it that he played Icardi up front and he made a disappearing act of the highest order. I think uh, he was ceremoniously parading the number nine around without really, really, really ever getting into the game. It has to be clearly said. The story, of course, was uh, the weather where you had some, you know, snows, <laughs> uh, whatever it was, hail, whatever it was on the pitch. It looked really, really weird that you have early, early made those conditions. But hey, global warming for you, it is. Um, which actually they couldn't really clean it off. And I thought and uh, this probably would have not been necessary in Manchester City's favor just for the simple reason that you know for this league passing game that they usually do such it makes it a little bit harder because the ball is not rolling as smoothly and yeah so uh the game started and i have to say from uh, it was not as similar to paris but i i, I think the game starts I mean, with good intensity from both sides but you could already, already see that um Icardi, as I said, was a no-show and I really would have liked to see at least Moise Ken up, 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 up there because it gives you more physicality. Yes, Icardi is probably the better goal scorer, but I think Moise Ken, in my opinion, is a little bit better suit, suit, suit to, to, to really break down things. But uh, hey, it is what it is. Um, I think PSG did not play all that badly, but you 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 could see they actually tried to uh, press C C C down. But then the way that the one nil kick came, came about is exactly uh, where you actually see the um, uh, evolution of Guardiola in many ways. Who uh, 
he took the long ball. There's Ederson, everyone from PSG is, is pressing forward. He makes the long ball, breaks down the press to Zinchenko, um, who can run through, uh, play the ball in. I think it was uh, who uh, it was De Bruyne who 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 then took the shot. That got deflected, but over to Mares who can pull it in from the side. I think a little bit before that there was a penalty call, and I think the Dutch referee. I actually think he is a good. He is definitely one one of the better ones, but he, but he didn't have a good day because twice he gave on a shoulder ball. Uh, he did not. He saw it as a handball, and once in the box. And thankfully we have VAR because uh, yes, I would have liked to have that penalty for PSG uh, because it would have made the tie easier. And again, I was for PSG in that tie, but I uh, quickly re realized the superiority of Manchester City. And then I was. I have to say, I if you're beaten fair and square, then I think I'm all right uh, with that outcome. Again, the penalty, that was a joke that, that, that was, they were taking off. Then it was 1-0 for City, which honestly did not change all that much for PSG because you needed to get two goals anyway, so you could go into overtime. Although if you want to win it straight, yes, of course. But PSG was always going to leak a goal anyway. And then there were two big chances. I mean, PSG really fought themselves back in. Uh, there was a head of Marquinhos, who probably was easy, was PSG's best player. Neymar was trying, but the longer the game went on, he got frustrated and didn't really work out for him. So a uh, header that hit the crossbar. Then uh, Ederson made a mistake playing out and Di Maria intercepted. And you could see he's aiming for, for the corner, but the ball curls out. If there is 1-1, one, one, I think PSG gets the second wave and gets the win. But exactly at that point, I, I, I knew that the tie is done. Uh, because from those two big, big chances, you need to make one and then you're in it. Um, it was never going to happen. And then you saw already PSG. Um, it was all kind of so lax. I mean, uh, yes, they were pressing, but they were always a few steps behind where uh, Man Manchester City was always doubling up. Uh, and and we have to have to say, I mean, the defenders, uh, especially Ruben Dias, made also an outstanding match. Whenever there was like uh, the threat of Neymar making an individual effort, they got blocked away. And I really liked how uh, Manchester City were pressing, but always with, with the security behind and knowing that Manchester City... Um, PSG, I'm getting a little bit uh, distracted, that PSG are just um, an in, uh, based on, on individual effort team. And with the biggest threat of Mbappé, with the speed, I mean, Neymar has some speed. Uh, I actually didn't realize it, but when, when he ran, he has some speed, but he was quickly uh, closed down. All the passing lanes were taken from, from, from him, and he always wanted to do it a little bit too fancy, a little bit uh, too much trying. And so, yeah, the game went into halftime and at the beginning of the second half, I think it should have probably be, yeah, you know, they were trying, but it was always, I felt that PSG is not going to make a goal. I remember once that Neymar was running around the box, but cool couldn't put it in. When Foden played to Mares to make it 2-0, we all knew that this is the game. PSG knew it too, and then PSG co uh, collapsed. Uh, they could not take this emotion on, on, on emotional level. I mean, the foul that Di Maria made, and I really love Di Maria's play, but the foul he made is just so stupid and unsportsmanlike. Uh, it deserved a straight red card right there. And then uh, I think... Verratti got sent out. I mean, I, I think that, that there should be there should have been probably another red card issued. Uh, it came out then that the ref uh, kind of insulted the PSG players, but uh, by telling them to f off. But I have to say that also might be culture because I think the, the Dutch referee probably has a, a little bit of a more of a rough way of saying things than you know the French guys are used to so I don't know uh, it's unsubstantiated but the way PSG was behaving I think they deserved to have that I, I really have to say they were like little, little kids in the end uh, and I was rather disappointed uh, from the overall picture that they gave um, they can be such a wonderful team if things are going for them, but if things are not not going for them, yeah. And I have to also look at Pochettino. I think he, you could see, Guardiola was yelling at it. Calm down, stay away. 
he was really uh, orchestrating and, and making sure that his players stay on full focus. But you hear nothing like that. He has no control. I think we already see that um, we're leading us straight into uh, the Chelsea game. We see the problem that Tuchel had. Because now Tuchel has a team that is actually listening to him. And is doing exactly. PSG is an uncontrollable team. And I think it goes all back to uh, Neymar, I have to, have to say. But if PSG would be a much more disciplined team and can harness all the star power to its maximum potential, I think PSG would, would be a veritable threat and probably would have would could give Manchester City a run for, for, for the money. But having just the stars uh, and you need to depend on them a little bit. And uh, I again, Neymar against Bayern Munich, Neymar and Pompey worked wonder wonder wonderfully. In the first half against Man City, it worked wonder wonderfully. But you can see when there's a little bit, they feel that the game is slipping away from them. This is where, where they're losing it. And this is something uh, that uh, that's a huge mentality problem. And this is where they need a good coach. And I hope that Pochettino can set them straight. But from what I could see, oh, that didn't look good. It really did not look good uh, there. And I don't know. They they need a hard hand, I think, those players. And I hope that I hope the Pochettino can turn it around. From, but from the little I saw, I think he should be changed and you need to get another coach and it's a tough t uh, thing, thing to say because I don't like changing coaches and he really came only in at the beginning of the, of the year. He had hardly had any time to work with the, with, with the team so always give the benefit of doubt but you could already see that the authority is missing and this is something I'm a little bit, I would be worried about. Um, and yeah, let's see if he can win the French title at least. As I said, Lille looking good. Let's go to the Chelsea game. Uh, it was also, I mean, first, first of all, uh, Jersey matchup. I expected Real Madrid to play in pink. I Either Chelsea should have given up that they play with white socks at home, but Real Madrid with black socks, they just didn't look right. It just didn't look right. Yes, it's the original look. And I, I realized that many Spanish teams, Valencia, Sevilla and Real Madrid, initially played with black socks. But it just doesn't look right uh, to see Real Madrid. Real Madrid I mean, I, okay, you had the all white up up there, and the black so but it it just didn't look uh, right. But Real Madrid didn't look right. Azar's return. I mean, he was like Icardi, uh, disappearing act. I, I maybe he had more touches, but I didn't see anything of him. The big hope seems Simpson from Vinicius Jr. I think uh, the midfield was completely outdone by N'Golo Kante by himself. I don't know what the plan was for Real Madrid. It, 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 it really did not look like they are in that game. And they were in the game for a long time. I understand with Sergio Ramos coming back, uh, you know, Rafael Varane being out, uh, there are so many in injuries that it's really hard for uh, Zidane to actually get something coherent going. But you had the big midfield, but Casemiro uh, could never take control of the midfield and Gross and Modric were very much out of it for most of the time. Uh, really taken out of, 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 of the game by Jorginho and N'Golo Kante, and especially N'Golo Kante, who was winning balls left and right. Hey, I, it was also interesting that um, Tuchel went with Havertz and Werner up front, and he said it up, uh, up front that he likes the chemistry between those two more, and bringing them Pulisic from the bench uh, gives them an additional threat. And yeah. Again, I was hoping for an exciting game, and the game was not bad, but it's just that Real Madrid, they injured up, and Chelsea really, really didn't need to do much. They scored an early goal uh, that was taken for offside by Werner. Uh, now I'm not clear with uh, how it went in sequence, but there was a big save. Uh, Monty had had to make two, two saves, and one was really big. I think it was after the 1-0 um, on Bonsema, who really took a shot that was right going for a corner, it was a great save. Um, that probably will put Madrid a little bit back into the game and showed how dangerous they are. But other than that, there was no real threat, especially in the second half. 
The goal came uh, for Chelsea in the 28th from a wonder, wonderful move where Harvards then nicely chips the goalkeeper and it hits the crossbar on the upside. It comes back and from that distance Werner just cannot miss. And you, you, you can see how he's stating himself. He has no one around. He jumps up and puts it nicely. The head has it on. If he misses that one, I think... Um, Chelsea fans will absolutely want to ship him back to Germany, uh, never to be seen again. But he gets this one goal, and at that moment again, not no nothing bad for, for for Real Madrid because you need it anyway. Uh, one goal, if not two goals, to win. So uh, did not change much. It was a, it was just a confirmation that Chelsea was uh, the better team, controlling the game without having much possession. And this is the one thing with Real Madrid: they had to have so much so so much of ball, but there was no verticality. It was all going sideways. It was really, really bad to watch from what Real Madrid were doing. And especially in the second half, I mean, Chelsea did not kill off the game. And that, that, that's the one thing that they have to um, uh, blame themselves for. I mean, right after the half, Harvard needs to make the goal. He again hits the, cro the, the crossbar. Then, um, was it? Yeah, N'Golo Kante was uh, put really nicely into play. Um, at, one, at, at one point, was saved by um, Kutua. I think it was again Harvard at one point. They were, they, he was free with Werner, and again uh, the goalie comes out. You need to play this smarter. You need to put Real Madrid away. You kept them hang, hanging around. It, uh, you were fortunate that on this day Real Madrid was an absolute no show. As I said, if you look at ball possession and you see this final scoreline, if you just look at the raw stats and uh, shows you that these raw stats like ball possession don't tell you a thing. Uh, it would be in, interesting to see like the, um, how many passes going forward were, were made because I think Real Madrid was more pa passing uh, sideways and back or you know uh, making day dangerous. There was nothing like that come 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 from Real Madrid. I really thought that at one point Real Madrid, the way this this, this game was was going, with all uh, the chances that Chelsea were wasting, that Real Madrid would just have one lucky punch and will go to overtime, which would have been everything but deserved. Fortunately, late in game, N'Golo Kante wins another ball, and this was just so typical. This guy can run for ages. He gives you an extra man. He's he plays for two. Uh, this is uh, this is the man that uh, I think PSG would badly need to have this presence in midfield, and you can afford having an, an Icardi uh, parading a number nine uh, in front up there. Um, so he plays the ball, goes out to Pulisic, who crosses it, and then Mason Mount uh, just has no choice but pulling it in, in, in and that sells the game, I think. I watched until the end, but at that point I knew I can turn, turn off, I know the Chelsea is going through to the final. And, as I said, fully deserved so. Uh, the final, we played in Istanbul, Manchester City is the home team. I'm a little bit concerned about the jersey matchup. I really hope that both teams can play in their respective home jerseys. Because the only other jersey that I see Chelsea playing in is this awful red and blue number. I really hope not, because this would instantaneously become one of the, if not the worst jersey ever to be worn in a Champions League final. And that would be a list that I should make uh, in the build up, in the run up to the Champions League final. So, yeah, um, that's my concern. I really hope they can play blue against blue. I think it would work just fine, uh, especially if. You know, if Chelsea plays in all, all, all blue, I think it should just uh, work, uh, work fine. Man City, uh, given by the bracket, are the home team. As I said, circle of power, just look at the quarterfinal bracket. I mean, we had a lot of circles in there any, any, anyway. But Porto, Liverpool, Real Madrid, the only non-circles are out and everything else went fine. And I want to end it with the projection. Who at this moment is going to win? It's 57% chance for Manchester City of lifting the trophy. Um, but you know, I actually think that Chelsea, if they stay defensively solid, they have a big chance. And uh, last thing I, I must say, it's a big one for Tuchel and Thiago Silva making two Champions League finals in a row. I think the chances are accurate. I think Manchester City is the better team, but Chelsea is so well defensively structured and we saw it in the FA Cup final where they didn't give City, albeit not playing with a first string team, uh, a big chance. There is on the weekend a little bit Champions League final preview. That will be interesting uh, where it will go, but I think it will tell us nothing about the Champions League final 
I actually conceded on that weekend one of the coaches is actually not playing their full. Ah, okay, Chelsea needs, need, needs to fight for top four. Maybe there's something in there. But yeah, we have the final. It will be played on the 29th of May. Will be an interesting one. In any case, I want to hear your thoughts on the two semifinals. Uh, what you thought about the games. Uh, also tell me who you think will win uh, the trophy. I have a feeling that experience Chelsea has been there, done that. They are having more European experience than City. Uh, for City, the European experience comes all down to Guardiola. But if Guardiola plays it well, City might well. It's finely balanced. So uh, it will be an interesting game. I'm not sure if it will be a good game. That I have to clearly say. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And both of us, we are saying bye-bye. <laughs> Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!